exhausted and I just want to go to sleep from today, but I, I'm going to keep this video fairly short because I want to talk about uh, the fact that I just saw Black Sabbath for the first and probably the only time I will ever see them, so I figure I might as well get my thoughts out. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? They're Black Sabbath. I felt compelled to see them, not only because this is their final tour. I mean, it's The End, that's the name of the tour. So I figure it's now or never. And also, uh, I read Ozzy's autobiography, I Am Ozzy. And honestly, I think if you are a fan of just rock music in general. You don't even have to like Black Sabbath or Ozzy Osbourne's music. Just read the book. It is I the fastest 400 pages I ever read. I just burned through that book. It was so entertaining. It I laughed, I cried. It's it's the story of a man's life and I it's such a great read, and it's surprisingly down-to-earth. Like, granted, it is written as if Ozzy Osbourne was speaking while he was writing it. So, like, there is, like, a curse word every other sentence. But after you get past that, like, it's actually a really great book to read. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about the book. I'm here to talk about... The concert, and I have to say, even despite the fact that they're in their 60s now, and I've seen a lot of shows of uh, bands that are in their 60s, like I saw Rush on their 40th anniversary tour, I saw The Who on their 50th anniversary tour, I saw Peter Frampton while he was pretty old, I mean, I saw B.B. King when he was still alive, and that was when he was like 87 years old, so I've seen a lot of old timers that have been around the block a few times and I gotta say with Black Sabbath I mean besides their physical appearance of them being old not much has really changed I mean they still got it like Ozzy he still does all the same like moves like this thing that he does with the microphone, like, when he's dancing, holding the microphone, and, like, the hand clapping, this thing, uh, I don't know if he's crazier at his solo, uh, performances, uh, but he's usually just doing the same stuff when he's with Black Sabbath, and Tony Iommi, like, he, uh, he still sounds awesome, and that dude is a riff machine, as I don't even need to say that. But, like, uh, when the monitor showed his fingers, like, I paid close attention to that to see the uh, bottle caps he uses uh, for his prosthetic fingertips, like his homemade prosthetic fingertips, and it was really cool to see those. Well, I should probably be using this hand because he's a left-handed guitarist and that just feels very backwards to me but at the same time it's cool because you can look at it and it's like a mirror image of your playing and I think that's really cool and Geezer uh, I mean Geezer still got it I personally think Geezer is a very underrated bassist like Especially considering, like, how revolutionary he was for the time, like, back in 1970 and 1971, like, uh, the fast finger style he does and, like, bending strings on a bass, that was pretty uncommon at the time, and it really influenced a lot of modern metal bassists today, and I don't think he gets enough credit for that, um, and... Bill Ward was not drumming here. I don't know why. Um, Tony, I forget his last name. I'll, I'll look up his name and probably post it in the description. But he filled in for Bill. And I have to say he did a really nice job filling in for Bill. Um, 
Oh, and that reminds me, I have to talk about Rat Salad, because Rat Salad, like, the studio version, there's a 40-second drum solo toward the end. In a live performance, it gets extended to a couple minutes. This dude did, like, a at least 8-minute drum solo, possibly 10. Like, it was just so long. Like, don't get me wrong, it was good, and I was entertained the whole time, and his drumming, I have to say, was actually pretty darn impressive. But he's just like, and it's... I did not anticipate seeing something that long. Um, but yeah, like, I should probably just talk about the big songs, because a lot of the smaller, lesser-known songs I wasn't really into... Uh, both because I never really listened to them that much, and also I just don't think they're as strong. But then there's some songs like Snowblind and stuff like that that are really memorable, and just the riffs alone carry the song for me. But like, uh, for example, with the stronger songs, like the track Black Sabbath from the album Black Sabbath, like, hearing that live, it, oh, it was, there's, I can see why they open almost every concert with that song, because it's so evil sounding, and it's just, it sent shivers down my body to hear, just to see and hear that live, and it was, oh, it was unreal. <laughs> I I just, I love the first four minutes of that song, like, before it breaks into the fast jam toward the end. Um, uh, and then the next big one was War Pigs, and of course, like, it plays on rock radio stations all the time. Like, even though I haven't heard the song in a while, I still knew all the words, like, as you're singing along to it, or like, at least when Ozzy does it live, he sings the first line and then lets the audience sing the second line. Like, Ozzy sings the odd-numbered lines, the audience sings the even-numbered lines. And one thing I just noticed about that song while hearing it at the show was the first two lines... Generals gathered in their masses, just like witches at black masses. He rhymes masses with masses. You can't rhyme a word with the same word. That's just lazy songwriting. But that's just me nitpicking. Other than that, I, I adore War Pigs. I, I love that song. And then N.I.B. is the next big song I really love because uh, it's a really underrated bass song, like, I love the bass line of that song, um, I mean, Iron Man, of course, was awesome live, and everybody loves Iron Man, um, what else, oh, and of course, the encore was Paranoid, and it's weird calling it an encore, because they go off stage for, like, not even 10 seconds. Like, usually with encores, the band goes off for, I don't know, like, at least a minute just to help build anticipation. But Ozzy just comes out and he's like, like, come on, everybody, one more song, one more song. And just, okay, I guess another song it could just technically be part of the set list itself and not really an encore they could have just had a longer pause but i mean yeah oh any nitpicks i have about the show are just nitpicks and i'd say overall they did really awesome with this show especially considering how advanced in age they are and Ozzy, his voice hasn't deteriorated that much, surprisingly. And I think it's sort of like the uh, uh, Mick Jagger effect. Like, one of the reasons the Rolling Stones have persisted for so long 
is because Mick Jagger's voice is unique enough and instantly recognizable enough that, like, he doesn't, like, have to sing high and rely on his young voice for the music because a lot of singers, once they hit 40 or 50, their voices really start deteriorating and they just can't sing like they used to. But, like, Mick Jagger, like, since his voice is so unique, like, and he doesn't really, like, he just sings normally, so to speak, and he doesn't belt that much, he can just sound the way he always does. And the same with Ozzy. Like, Ozzy's voice is distinct enough and instantly recognizable enough that you know it's Ozzy. Um, and... There's not a whole lot else to say, really, I guess. Uh, other than the opening act, I can't believe I uh, forgot about them. Um, uh, I forget their name. Shoot. You know what? I'm just going to put their name in the title or in the description because I I honestly can't remember it. Um but yeah they I mean they were tight, they were very good. Um their sound it is very old school classic rock style rock sound and my guess is they chose them because they sound similar to Black Sabbath and that would help get the audience amped for them. Um, and I have to say, I liked, I noticed a distinct difference, just thinking about this right now, the two uh, bassists, because the bassist for the opening act like had a very low, low range, muddy uh, bass tone, whereas Geezer's is more the typical Fender precision bass or Fender jazz bass tone where it's mid-rangey and very cutting, and I really like that tone. I like Geezer's bass tone. Um, but, yeah, there's not much else for me to say, really. Um, I will add it was an outdoor show, and I was fairly far away. Like, I was halfway between the stage and the end, maybe a little closer. So, I actually didn't need earplugs for this show. Like, I can still feel it in my right ear a little bit, but it was, like, just not loud enough that I didn't need earplugs. And if any of you have seen my concert reviews before, you know I wear earplugs to every concert I go to because I like to conserve my hearing because when I went to see Lamb of God three years ago it was so loud I went deaf for three days and I thought I was gonna go deaf for the rest of my life but then my hearing slowly started coming back and now I want to preserve my hearing because I don't think they could handle a bombardment like that again without some sort of permanent damage um, but yeah, any other additional things that went on during the show that I missed to talk about here, I'll, uh, write all about it in the description, and, uh, the next concert I plan on going to is Buckethead on September 24th, so you have that to look forward to, and, well, I do, you, all you really have to look to, forward to is, my video of me talking about it, like midnight screening style, like if any of you watch Cinema Snob, like it just came to my, I just realized that what I'm doing is basically midnight screenings, but instead of for movies, it's for concerts. Like you don't, I don't show any clips or any music of the show, it's just sitting down and talking about the show, I try to get people to do this with me, but the only person I've had to do it was uh, Sam back in my Buckethead, my first Buckethead concert review, 
and he actually went to the this show too with me as well and he had a blast at this show he was just like to the right of me going yeah basically the whole time well not yeah per se but like you know he was loving it um but he's just said, I can't do it tonight. I have to get up early tomorrow. I have stuff to do. But you know what? Uh, it was, I still had a great time at this show. Uh, it was not, it was like the perfect length. It wasn't too short that I felt cheated. But at the same time, it didn't feel overly long. Um, I was never really bored. Um... And both the crowd and the uh, performers on stage uh, were very engaging and just had a great time. And you could just feel the energy through the place. And when that happens, you know, it's a great show. So eh, I guess I'll stop talking now and uh, yeah, I'll see you when I... Go see Buckethead.